Hi there, uh, Coach Bruce again with uh, another video. This one about the uh, concepts that we use when we're on offense and the strategy that, that we follow uh, this year in 8v8 soccer. Um, we will not have offensive plays per se, uh, but we do have these ideas that we want to execute when we have the ball. And if we execute them well, um, we should do very well. Um, I've seen this in the past where when we follow these ideas, these concepts, uh, we can really create a lot of opportunities for goal, a lot of goals, uh, a lot of happy players. So let's get into what we want to do on the offensive side. And there are four things. So if you remember our defensive strategy uh, video, um, we talked about the different concepts we want to follow. There are four words that we want to follow in defense. The four words that we follow on offense have to do our width, long corners and position. We want us, we want our players to use these words as they're yelling out instructions to each other and encouragement. So um, let's talk about what these four um, concepts are and take a look at how they, they come into play in, in the course of a game. So we'll start with width. We want to keep our width and, and what we mean by that is um, we don't want to bunch up when we're on offense because when we bunch up, when we have too many players in a small space, we make it very easy for the defenders that are trying to stop us uh, to stop us. It just we we close off our our uh, our opportunities, and we can see that very clearly. Let's take a look at an example here on the on the board where our center forward has the ball in an attacking position. She wants to move forward, and there's one defender between her and the goalie great opportunity. Where are her teammates? Well, what we see a lot in, in rec soccer is that everyone wants to be near the ball, everyone runs to the ball, and we end up with a couple of wings and a midfielder, and they're all in the same place. That's bad width. We are not wide as a team, and when we're not wide, we don't have options. It doesn't matter if that center uh, forward passes to a wing or not. From a defensive point of view, the, the other team is not worried. They can move forward with it with no problems whatsoever. What we want to do is we want to stay wide. A better situation is to run away from the ball, frankly, and to create some space. So here we have the same four players, but we have a lot more options. And with that good width, our center forward now can pass forward to the left of the corner, can pass into the box to our other wing, can uh, set the ball to the right to an open midfielder. She can dribble herself. There are lots. There's a lot more danger here for our opponent, and that's what we want. So keeping wide is something that's hard to teach with a, a drill. But in practice, when we're having our little mini games and the like, we'll stop every now and then, and we'll ask the the offensive side of the ball. Are you guys wide enough? Look where you're standing. Um, this is an important concept that you need to get. Uh, the second offensive concept or, a conf or st strategy on offense is long passes and runs. Now, there's a time in your development as a soccer player when you can make tiny little movements and short passes, and it's good enough because your your opponents aren't that good. But you play on a big field now, and you play with, with better opponents, and tiny passes are way or short passes and tiny movements are way too easy to defend and what we want to do is we want to stretch a defense by passing the ball long and making our teammates run to that space not to pass into where they are but passing to where we want them to be so take a look here we've got a wing forward with the ball center forward is nearby if we make that tiny little pass it really doesn't create any advantage whatsoever because that defender who is covering the wing forward can take one step to the left and have coverage of the next as well. A better pass, a more dangerous pass, the types of pass we want to, to work on are those entry passes that push the ball f quickly up the middle or, or up the side of the field and create a lot of danger. This is a very useful pass we're seeing here where we're passing through the, the defense to where we want that wing forward to be. And that's a pass that creates a great opportunity for a shot on goal. So we'll work in practice. That's a, that's a good drill we can run about long passes. And we'll ask you in the drills, you cannot take a shot on goal until you, unless, until you take a pass at least of 15, 20 yards and, and work on that uh, capability. Similar to that is the, is the question of working corners. So as you can see, a lot of our concepts we want to manage on offense are about making space and, and, and stretching the defense. Working the corners is another way that we do that. Many defenses are going to try to clog the middle of the field. That means that when we attack them, they're going to get compact. They're going to put a lot of people in the penalty area, make it hard for us to, to move in there. And good things happen when we break that log jam in the middle. The way we do that is working the corner.
So let's take a, a look at this example here where let's say we all push to the middle. We're pushing the ball forward. What is the defense going to do? Well, they're going to sag back, and our people are going to come forward, and we're going to create a log jam. We're going to create a big bunch, a mass of humidity in the middle of the field where we can move the ball forward maybe a little bit more, but we really don't have a, a great opportunity to get a, a good solid shot off because there's no space. When we're in a situation like this, it makes a lot more sense to work the sides. We have a compact defense, we should probably work the corner. So in this case, a better case is when our center forward passes to the corner to where she wants that wing to be, and the wing can run it down. Now when we do something like this, it forces the defense to react and to get out of that compact mode, and a lot of times they're going to move to a way that leaves the middle open, which creates an opportunity for us. So when we're working the corners, we're breaking up a log jam in the middle. We don't always have to go to the corner, but if they've got a compact defense it is, and, and it's too crowded to move straight toward the goal, that's the way we break down that defense. So you'll hear your, your teammates and your coaches yelling corner when that's the, the opportunity uh, to create some danger on the offensive side. And the final one is a little more difficult to explain and it has to do with getting into a goal scoring position and this is what you should do when you don't have the ball to create more danger so what we mean by that is when you're in a goal scoring position you can receive the ball and take a shot almost immediately you don't have to turn around you don't have to to move closer to the goal you're in a place where when that ball falls at your feet you can immediately take a good hard shot on goal and to do that, you kind of think about what can you see at the same time. If you can see the goal and you can see the person passing the ball to you at the same time in your, in your line of vision, you're probably in a goal-scoring position. If you can't, you're not. So we'll start here with, you know, we've got the ball in the corner with our wing forward. Look at our center forward. What is she looking at? Well, she can look at the wing forward, but she can't see the goal at the same time. She's not in a goal-scoring position. And the same holds true of that other wing forward. Look, if she's got her back to the goal and she's, and she's looking at the other wing forward, she can't see the ball and the goal at the same time. So any pass that comes into her is going to require her to turn around and get a good shot off and get her feet in position. That's going to give the defense a chance to, to react and to, and to stop her. Good scoring positions are like this one top of the box near post so the near the near post is the goal post closer to the ball and if we're at the top of the box and the balls in the corner or in almost any position uh, down low you can see we can see the goal we can see the player at the same time a ball that is fed is passed to, to a player at the top of the box is easily struck hard at the goal and the far post is another good example where a pass through the goal crease to that player at the far side is it has a great opportunity because she can receive the pass and shoot almost immediately there's no time for the defense to, to react those are good scoring positions that's getting in position so we will actually run some pretty cool drills we have one we call the gopher drill which forces you to find a, a scoring position uh, based on a random space that we put the ball on the field one final note here is that good scoring positions don't just apply to our forwards. It applies to our midfielders, even to our, our uh, defenders. When the, the ball is down low, there's no reason a defender can't come in and create that goal scoring position. A great example of when we do this is on corner kicks. So, again, four concepts that we follow. Width, long, passes and runs, working the corners, and getting in a goal scoring position. If we do these four things right, if we if we speak to each other uh, on the field, coaches to teammates, teammates to teammates, about accomplishing these goals, we're going to have a very dangerous offense. We're going to have a lot of goal scoring opportunities. We're going to score a lot of goals. We're going to win a lot of games. And we're going to have a lot of happy people, I guess. So uh, keep these in mind. We'll work on them in, off, uh, in practice, and we'll execute them in the games. That's the end of our Offensive Strategy Concepts video. Um, Coach Bruce, I will see you at practice.